Welcome everyone to today's Flex webinar. I am your host, Marcus Merritt. Um, today, we wanted to do an update on where we're at on Flex 5 and what things are new. I wanted to specifically do this one um, today because the patch that went out last night that everybody should have today has a lot of great new features that I'm really excited about. Um, but it's been eight weeks since Brandon did the last one of these where he did a major update. And so I am going to cover everything that's been um, in any patch since then. So there's been four patches. We do a patch every two weeks. And so I'm going to cover features from all of those. I'm not going to specifically mention which ones were today or then. Um, I'm not going to do it in any particular order, but I am covering things that have been in the system for a while, but some that are specifically out today. And those are some of the features that I'm, again, most excited about. And I really wanted to, to push to everybody to show some of these big things. Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, move to my live display. Okay, so here we are in my uh, Flex system. So I do have this plan to organize in a couple things. First, we're gonna talk about updates to project elements, to the actual list, your quotes, your pull sheets, things like that, okay? So with this, uh, the first thing I wanna talk about, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and create this, is a major update and change to the way event folders look, okay? It's not really changing how they work, just how they look. Uh, we're unifying that experience to be more here. So I'm just going to call this um, Flex 5 update demo. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put me in as the account manager. Let's get a start date and an end date. And I'm not concerned about, well, let's fill in some of this uh, because there is a value um, to showing this information in our updated UI for it. So let's at least get to that. So with that, when we've created, we've matched the experience so it's going to look like the other kind of project elements. So we, when you load it, it's going to have that information here in the header. One of the best things of it, not only just that it's a more unified thing, so you're, you're, you're more used to looking what's there, it will give you the ability to edit from here, which in the past, in that way, you couldn't do. You always had to go back to the edit header. Uh, similarly, in the previous, there were a more limited amount of uh, fields that would actually display when you were looking at it. So if you wanted to double check other data, again, you had to go back to the edit header place to make those changes. And so now you'll have more of that data listed here in the same kind of way. Okay. Um, with that, we've also added the notes tab here. The notes did exist in the previous uh, you know, view of it, but they weren't again as clean of a way. You had to go into the edit header. You see that we don't have a detail block because event folders are a structure document only. There are no details, but otherwise, again, your experience is going to be matched with the experience you have when you're in a quote or a pull sheet, things like that. Okay, so we're just trying to really work to unify that user experience. Okay, so along with this change and update here, we now have the ability within the modify that you can copy an event folder in Flex uh, 5, um, that's brand new, or that you could uh, move it if it was turned on. It is not turned on in this system. It's not super common that I would need to move them. You don't only have to do that if you had like event folders within event folders, but you do kind of have that opportunity in there. Okay. So that's that biggest thing. Um, and I specifically remember recently working with a customer who wanted to be able to copy event folders and they still had to go back to Flex 4 to do that. That is now, uh, that is one that was specifically in today's update. Okay. So that's a big thing there. With that, I'm going to go ahead and go to create a child document. We've been able to do this for a little bit. Um, and I'm going to make a quote in here to demo a few things about financial documents that are updated. So we're going to leave all of this here. Go ahead and say OK. And so the first key thing on this is that we have now the payments tab enabled. Now, this is mostly for accounting staff, but you do now have the ability to see if you've entered payments on an existing thing or you can enter a payment here in the same kind of way you would have in the previous uh, user interface, works the same way. Um, or if you were used to going over to that right side, the financials tab, you can hit financials and then enter payment, works again the same way. Once I enter that payment, let's just go ahead and do one here. Let's say we got some uh, cash. I guess I should probably put some items on this uh, job. 
So let's go to our details and let's put uh, a little bit of stuff in here. And I don't know why I'm doing video stuff. I always like to do audio, I'm an audio guy. Uh, oh, except I know this doesn't actually work. I haven't fully built it back out. Uh, okay, let's put some of these here. Just to have a couple items on there to have some some price in here um, with that. And so um, for that, um, I can now go and enter the payment. It has the total this is set for. It assumes I'm going to do the, the total on that. We'll say they gave me a check and it was check uh, 1001 um, in there. So now that uh, I have that payment, once I uh, minimize these sides, I get that tab back and I can see that that payment is there. I could then delete that payment if that ended up, you know, the check bounced or something, or I could add additional payments if that was only supposed to be a deposit, et cetera. Okay, so that's the, the key thing uh, there. Um, really brief uh, highlights, real simple change. Um, the easiest way to do this is to grab some labor in here. Um, we have enabled, this was not in the previous, that I lines that are non-discountable will get the highlight that previously you've experienced in Flex 4 to help remind yourself why you're not seeing that discount transition across the lines. They've been doing that highlight now, so that's an important thing. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about, I first have to do a quick little uh, demo of a feature that has been in the system for a bit, but it's directly related to a major update. So some people may be well aware, some people not that um, logistics view is a good and easy way to do bulk uh, rental planning, things like that. So we could go in here and realize, oh, this says I, you know, though this actually says I have enough, we realize I'm gonna be busy and I need to rent these from someone else or it's in another city and I don't wanna ship them, I'm gonna rent them, okay? I can do this by just going to the SR quantity, that's my sub rent quantity. Again, we're on the logistics view and I can go to the sub rent vendor and go pick my vendor if I know who it is. Again, there's not a lot of clients in this system, so I just put Chris in there. Now, the important thing when using the logistics view is filling in those fields didn't do anything, okay? If I look at my project tree, I have an account receivable, but I do not have a rental PO. What I have to do is after I fill this in, I need to go to the truck here and then process an update of my sub rental paperwork. Note that if I was planning for transfers, you do that by doing, I don't have it properly enabled in here, but you would be an update transfer paperwork. And the back order is if you were planning to purchase something, so you wanted to make a purchase PO, you are just gonna buy new stock to cover that shortage. Um, then you would do update back order paperwork, okay? In this, I'm gonna run the update sub rental paperwork. It says here that it generated a uh, sub rental. If we go back to our project, oh, looks like I gotta reload. Get that to notice. We'll see now I have a rental PO for planning to rent those items from Chris. If I said I was renting all 10 of them, they automatically pull in here. Um, I didn't have a cost in the system, but if in your supplier section, you do have a planned cost from that vendor, it will pull that information in there. So that's a really good way to do bulk things and or to override when the system believes you have enough, but you want to plan to do it another way. The regular conflict way where you just double click on the conflict menu, it won't let you plan a sub rental if it doesn't think you're short. It's trying to stop you from doing that. And sometimes you just need to force it. That's a decision you've decided to make. So again, that has been in the system for a little bit. Some people were just not, not as aware of it. But what I wanna highlight is that in the past, there's been a little bit of an issue where um, that information didn't really transition to the pull sheet. And so the guys in the warehouse were not aware of those plans for that rental. They weren't really aware of what was going on. They can go back up to the quote and find that information, but they're not super likely to do that. And so we had set a plan and I uh, had pushed for this really heavily. And it's the first step of that is in place now where I'm gonna now go to this show. I'm gonna confirm it.
and I am going to create a pull sheet. And one of the big updates, this is one of the ones for today that I'm really excited about is in the pull sheet, there is now a logistics view, okay? It matches that same logistics view, the default from the quote document and is here. So any of that information being the eye of plan, that sub rental, that information's now here. So your guys in the warehouse can just click over to the logistics tab and see that information and know that, oh, we're planning to sub rent these. I don't need to pull them, okay? Um, these are not editable fields. We can't update sub rental paperwork from here yet. That is something that is in the plan. I can't tell you when, but that will happen at some point. For the moment, we're just making sure at least the information is updated. So at the pull sheet level, your guys can glance over there and figure out and see what's going on. Um, that if after I've created the pull sheet, I realize I need to make a update to that rental PO or I need to make plans, I can go back up to the quote, I can add additional things. So let's say we've just suddenly decided I'm gonna rent all of this. So I'm gonna go here and say that I'm also gonna rent these four from Chris. Again, I can't do this on the pull sheet level currently. I have to go back up to the quote level. So I run that, I again, update my sub rental paperwork. And then I will have to go back to my workflow and update my PO to push that information back down the chain, just as if I had made a change to the number of items on the list or something else that way, okay? But doing that will make it so that once I reload this, that updated information is now here, so the warehouse is aware of those changes. Okay. So um, that's a really big new thing. It's a really good start um, towards a kind of long-term plan to be able to have a lot more uniformity between that um, financial document and the equipment list and having that same information for those logistical plans you have between sub-renting, transferring, et cetera. Okay. So that's the, the big thing there. Um, I'm not digging into it, but I do just want to state that really quick, uh, we have uh, created the ability to make tasks. Um, Flex 5, that was not previously available. Um, the ability to, you know, edit and process those tasks here um, in uh, kind of way. So this is just cleaner and available now, um, sort of uh, a way um, and that. So that's just a kind of quick thing. Not a lot of people use it. Some people do. I think it's great when you do. It's fine if you don't. Um, that is now available in Flex 5. And then the other thing that is to me one of the biggest is, and I'm going to go back here to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this quote to inquiry. And then for those who saw, uh, oh, except I don't have it built in the system. Um, I'm going to push it back forward to confirmed. I'm going to uh, flag it as ready to invoice. Going to generate the invoice. Okay, and then I'm going to come back here and close the quote. So I do this to highlight, and this has been again been in the system for a little while. But we see we have this notate here. If something is closed or if something is locked, it does this extra reminder for you. In Flex 5, though, you have much more of an ability to still dig around, to look at things, to adjust your view. I just have lost any ability to edit this because it is closed and all closed documents are locked. But the other big thing we realized is sometimes people do this accidental thing of they delete the quote. They come here meaning to delete selected lines and instead they delete the whole quote. They're in a rush and they do that. And then they don't realize it. And you can still get to it because most deletions in Flex are soft deletes. They're just moved into a harder to access place. And so if I delete this quote, oh, it's telling me I can't delete a closed one. Okay, well, let's go delete this uh, event folder. Uh, okay, so it went away, but if I, uh, well, I remember how to get around uh, projects, event folders, and then I say, hey, show me deleted ones, 
and I go pop it back open, if I get back to it, it is now going to highlight that this thing has been deleted. So you will not have any confusion about, oh, well, I knew the number to it. I knew how to get to it. And so you type in the number and you get to it and you're like, oh, no wonder it's not showing up on the calendar. It's deleted and I need to talk to the administrator to get it undeleted. Okay. So that's the last big thing I want to talk about on the project elements um, portion there. Okay. Um, the next is I want to talk about some updates on inventory. Uh, there is a one big thing. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's actually my favorite biggest thing for inventory is that now, as of today, those people on your staff who have permissions to edit inventory organization um, do have the uh, ability to edit the inventory tree that has not been available. But you see now here this cog for configure. So the interface has changed a little bit. In Flex 4, you just were using the same interface. And sometimes you'd say, oh, I'm going to like put an item on and you go to drag it. And instead you go, oh, never mind, I don't want it. And you put it over here and then it pops up the menu saying, did you want to move this? And you go, no, I'm just trying to not add it to my quote anymore. In this instead, you have to go into a whole different mode. You click this configure if you have the permissions and it opens a tab that then is your ability to configure. Now all you're doing is focusing on configuring, okay? When we do that, we have the same ability to open and close. Um, then if we want to move something around, so let's just say we wanna move our expendables up a little higher, we grab the handle just like in anything else. We move it around, we can see here where it says drop inside or we get the clear black line and it's moved that way. It's the same thing for individual items. So if we went in here and we wanted to change the order of some of these items, we can just do that in the same kind of way there. If I wanted to move it into a different folder, that kind of way, very straightforward, very simple, okay? Um, the other then is if you want to edit a folder, you can first right now to edit it, you just double click the folder and that will pop up a screen. So then you can edit the name, edit the icon, view groups, other, et cetera, okay? If you want to add a new child group to something, you say, oh, in this cameras and records, I hadn't had a packages, you can click here and add a child group. And I wanna have a packages group. I wanna put a icon on it. Oh, box icon I like for that. And I can add that in now. Oh, I wanted it to be at the top. Well, then I can grab this and move it up to the top, okay? And then the last is um, if you need to add a new folder at the top level, you just go down to the bottom here and add a new group. We just call this a uh, new group and hit add and it will show up here at the bottom and then can be moved around and adjusted, renamed, etc. cetera. Uh, but that's a big thing. Um, for a while, I've been still having to give instructions to tell people, oh, you're trying to make you know adjustments to your structure. Well, go back to Flex 4 and do that. Oh, you're trying to work on just cleaning up the inventory items. That's easier to do in Flex 5. So to me, this is a really big thing there. Um, with that, a uh, couple other things I wanna highlight on inventory items. Uh, so let's go back in here. Um, uh, so um, we now have the ability to copy an inventory item in Flex 5. That's just this icon up here of the two pages on top of each other, copy an inventory model. Past that, works the exact same way as previous, um, just has that ability now. We can also um, do some of the things to serial units that you would need to do in the past. So if we click to the serial unit tab in here, I can bulk edit serial units. So if I wanted to uh, add a stencil to some of these because they became part of some package, I can go here. You'd see this edit selected serial units, and then I'm gonna bulk edit anything here. Obviously you wouldn't very often edit the serial number, but if I was gonna put a stencil, um, I was gonna put them in some kit, I wanted to color code that kit, I could do that. If their model number was wrong, purchase date, any of those informations you can update in a bulk way through that. If for some reason I realized the items were in the wrong location, um, maybe some kind of case and I retired some piece of gear and I'm now gonna move where that case is, I'm still just gonna use these as the example, I can move those serial numbers. Um, for that, the same kind of thing. I select the serial units I want to move, I pick this uh, little hand truck here for move selected serial units. 
I go find the item that I want to have it be instead. Um, I'm just gonna go find some case in here and then I could go in here and say, oh, I want it to be into this Midas case. That doesn't really make any sense what I did, but that moved those items, okay? So obviously you need to keep in track of making sure it's what you mean it to do, um, but that is the plan there, okay? Um, you also now have the ability to do the reset for physical count when you're trying to kick everything out and then scan everything back in on a serial uh, serialized model. You again back up at the top here, reset for physical count, pick the location or all locations, and that will process that that way. Um, we have also added the ability to uh, mark an item out of commission without having to process uh, maintenance. Now, for those of you who watched my logging maintenance best practices, I don't think this is a best practice, but we don't wanna stop you. Some people want to just start with going straight out of commission. So on having a single serial unit open, you can go in here and just say, I wanna mark it out of commission and put your reason. Again, to me, the better thing is to make a maintenance log getting more detail in here and then say, I want it to also be marked out of commission in this process, that is the better, but you can do it just directly. That is perfectly allowed, we've updated that. Um, another thing that I think is a bigger one, but it's for less people, is we have added the inventory manager. Now it's important to not be confused with the catalog worksheet. The inventory manager is where um, you would go to just review status of some things and where you would go um, to you can kind of more bulk delete or undelete some items, that kind of thing. So let's take a peek at that really quick. So we have in here the inventory manager. Again, a key thing from the catalog worksheet. I can't edit these in here. This is about kind of filtering, searching through, finding some items, okay? It's important to note that you have the ability to include serial units or not. So I can add all the individual items or not. I can include hidden items if I want to but also a really nice feature that this is much improved from the way in Flex 4, where if I'm really trying to filter, because my key is I'm trying to get deleted items and I'm trying to figure out, oh, I need to undelete some items someone deleted accidentally, we can go to this show only and say show only deleted items. And so then these are all my deleted items, not that many, and I have a much easier time filtering and working through that. Or if you're someone who uses the hide feature within Flex, and you're worried some items are improperly hidden or are not hidden and should be, you could tell it to show only hidden items. And again, you would get only that list makes it a lot easier to do. Similarly though, you could still include the serial units if there were, so you see a whole bunch of these things pop up. Um, so we have kind of that option, but that's kind of that nice thing. Similarly, if we said include deleted, I mean deleted only, but include hidden, we could make our list slightly longer if they were deleted and hidden, okay? So a uh, nice little feature. Um, I will say from this, we can delete items and add new items. I don't, I haven't tested enough and I need to double check if the undelete feature is properly working. And this looks like it's still saying delete even though I'm on deleted. So uh, that may have to be checked, but just even the ability to kind of search through, get a better idea of what's going on, utilize that. I think it's gonna be a nice step and adding those additional things shouldn't be um, very long. Um, and then really quick, uh, one more thing, let me get back to uh, one of these items, is uh, we have recently implemented the GL accounts tab. Uh, again, it's not used by a lot of people, but um, if people are having you know, a specific item that you're tracking differently in your accounting, and the threshold tab has been uh, enabled for those people that use threshold to help manage either sub warehouses or who are trying to use it to manage expendables, okay? Works in the same way as on the previous, so it's nice and clean and easy um, there that way, okay? So those are the biggest things, but I have a couple system settings changes I want to highlight. So if we go in here and we go to menu system settings, we know there's lots and lots of system settings and we see lots and lots of these are grayed out, but I do wanna highlight that we're working on some of the ones that we believe are needing to be accessed most frequently by the most customers. We're really trying to work through those in the most uh, or, you know, order that makes the most sense, okay? So with that, one key thing is we've worked on making it so you can do your barcode printing from Flex 5, okay? That means all of the tabs necessary for that or all the pages necessary for that have been enabled. The barcode printing preference, 
so you can have the plan of what things are going to what printer. Um, the well, back to system settings. The uh, printer templates and the printers themselves. I'm not going to go into the details of how they work. They work the same way as in Flex 4, um, so that's pretty easy there. Um, I will warn that there are some more complicated templates. A lot of templates work fine. Some of the more complicated templates um, are having issues. We're working on those right now, so you, it is worth testing. Uh, but just as the note, if we again went back to our uh, VRX here, and we wanted to print this, we can go up here to print the model barcode. And I want to specifically show this because the interface is slightly different, where now it lists every printer that you have in your system and the current templates that are assigned to them. And we have available on, you know, we have Aaron's barcode printer and my barcode printer, and we show a couple different ones on each of them. Mine only has two by ones. This one has two by halves, okay? And so we can go in here and say, oh, I wanna print two copies on this and two copies on this. Now, it's not very often that we would do that under the idea of one in one of your warehouses and one in the other. That you're not going to do. But I have seen customers in my uh, going out and working with customers who maybe have two different size of printers under this kind of idea, this two by one and this two by path that sit next to each other so they don't have to constantly change and reload the, the um, tape that's in there. And so you could have some item where you go, I wanna have you know, two of these that are this kind and two of these that are this kind be print on those two labels simultaneously to then stick them on this different piece of gear where some places you need the smaller label and some places you have more room for a bigger label, okay? Now, again, this click up here is for the model. This would be mostly if you were going for a non-serialized thing. If you're trying to print the serial unit barcode, you can click this, go in here, and then click this one down here for printing barcodes of the selected serial units, and that interface is the same, and it would get you as many copies of each of these um, as you needed, okay? So uh, that's a nice thing there. Feel free to play with that. Like I said, there may be some issues with printing the printer templates. Those have been uh, put into, and we're working on getting those fixed as soon as possible, but I do know that for sure some templates work, a couple others we found some issues, okay? And then the last key thing that I want to mainly highlight that's in the system settings that we've added here is we've added the skills and qualifications page. So you can update and add additional skills and qualifications to your system. So very simple here. If we were just going to go here and I wanted to add a video engineer, I wanted to put a description, I don't have to, that's now in there. And then similarly to complete that process, um, it does properly work if I go to a service. So if I go to my uh, video, well, I'll say video technician because I don't have uh, what I would call a video engineer. And we can say that, oh, this one is supposed to be connected with the role of video engineer there. And then the uh, we can go to the contact, this employee, and I could open myself and say, I have the skill of uh, video engineer, at, you know, I'll leave that as a five and audio engineer, and we'll say for audio, I have it as a seven. Note that once you have this, because this interface is slightly different, you can then sort this by, oh, sorting it by the level on things, or you can sort it by enabled or unenabled. So you can kind of clean up if you're trying to review someone's list um, on there. Um, so that's kind of there. So those are the key things that um, I kind of want to bring up of some of the biggest new things. Like I said, to me, the big, big things are that ability to edit the uh, structure. That's the big one. And that logistics tab. Those to me are the two favorite, probably secondly with that deleted notification. I just think sometimes people get confused and get lost. They don't know why they can't seem to find it. And so that uh, notifier there makes that really clear. With that, uh, I'm going to open that. Like I said, as always, um, you know, uh, feel free to send feedback to us. As always, you can uh, email support at flexrentalsolutions.com if you're having issues or concerns. Um, if you have comments on these webinars specifically, please uh, reach out to training at flexrentalsolutions.com and we will happily, um, you know, uh, address those. If you have topics you want to make sure we're covered, if, uh, you know, other kind of feedback on how these go. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, really appreciate your time. Um, uh, and again, as always, um, 
reach out to the sources on your screen and you have yourselves a great day. Thanks.